In this tutorial, I'll demonstrate how to create a simple photo postcard in Corel Draw with a background, decorations and text, and of course, a family photo. I'll be creating a holiday greeting card, but you can use the same techniques for any occasion. Before we get started, if you're watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can also find a written version of this tutorial. The first step is to decide what size my card will be and whether it will be printed or shared electronically. A digital image would have no size limitations, but for print, I need to start out with a size in mind. There are thousands of printing services, both online and in stores, where I would generally find clear instructions about photo sizes, resolutions, file formats, and how to upload. But for my example, I plan to print at home using a pre-formatted template that has space for two 4x6 images. From the Get Started tab of the Welcome screen, I'll click New Document and keep Letter as my page size with 300 dpi resolution and click OK. Next, to find my template, I'll choose Layout, Page Size, and select Label Presets, and the one I want is under Avery Laser Ink, number 5389, with space for two 4x6 postcards. This changes the page size to the 4x6 size for the template. Now I want to define the page border to use as a clipping object for the background image. The easiest shortcut for this is to double-click the Rectangle Tool icon. My background image is a CorelDRAW file containing several vector snowflakes. For all sorts of design projects, Corel has a wealth of content such as clip art, borders, fill patterns, and more. You can find this by going to the Welcome screen and clicking Store or Get More depending on the version you're using. Choose a filter if you want and browse the options. Filtering by vectors will produce a list of vector content, which is scalable and easy to use in Corel Draw, and these files are available in a number of formats. I already have the image I want, so I'll go back to my drawing, click the import icon, find the image, and bring it in off to the side. This image is a bit strong for a background, so while it's still selected, I'll choose Effects, Adjust, Hue Saturation Lightness. Preview is checked, so I can see my changes in real time. Lowering the saturation washes it out a bit. I'll increase the lightness and keep the hue as is. To make this image fit the page, I'll right click on it and choose Power Clip Inside, then click the page rectangle for trimming. The background jumps inside and I'll choose the Fill Proportionally option. To remove the page border outline, I'll change its outline width to None. You may decide to keep the border and make it a bit wider. Now I want to bring in the family photo, so I'll use Import again and place the photo on the left side of the card. To place a double frame around this photo, I'll use several shortcuts. First, with the photo still selected, I'll press Shift and double click the rectangle icon, which creates a rectangle surrounding the photo at the top of the objects list. With that rectangle selected, I'll double click the outline swatch on the right side of the status bar. I'll make this an inside frame 8 pixels thick, and for color, I'll use the eyedropper to sample a color from the photo. For the outer border, I'll do the same thing. With the photo still selected, I'll use Shift double click again to create a new rectangle, double click the outline swatch again, and this time the outline will be outside, 3 pixels thick, with a different color from the photo. Swatches from colors I use are listed in the document palette along the bottom of the window. Next comes the text. I'll activate the text tool, click where I want to start, and write what I want to say using the default font and size, clicking in blank space when finished. To make edits, I'll use the pick tool to select the text, choose a new font, change the font size and move it a bit, and click a swatch in the document palette to match the outer frame color. I want to add my greeting text in the lower right corner on top of a new rectangle. I'll use the Rectangle tool to create this rectangle, set the fill color by clicking a swatch, and I'll remove its outline. I want the background to show through, so I'll activate the Transparency tool with the Uniform Transparency option, and I'll increase the percentage a bit. I could leave this area empty, so that I could write in a message by hand on each printed card. Or I can add more text, and because the text will fit in the rectangle, 
I want to click when I see the dotted square on the text icon. This creates paragraph text that stays within the rectangle, which I can highlight to select and change font and color, and I'll full justify the text. With the text still selected, I'll choose Text, Paragraph Text Frame, Fit Text to Frame, so that the text takes up the whole rectangle. Now for some decorations. I'll use Import again to bring in my vector snowflakes off to the side. I'll click Outside to deselect everything, and to select just one vector snowflake, I'll Control click it and move it into the card and resize it if needed. To change the color, I can click any swatch in the standard palette along the right or in the document palette. And for a nice shadow effect, I'll activate the shadow tool, drag from the snowflake center just a bit, and adjust the shadow transition. I now have a few more snowflake curves brought in the same way, and while each one is selected and the shadow tool is active, I can click the copy icon and copy the shadow properties from my first snowflake. Now it's time to print, so I'll choose File, Print Preview. Because the template is already defined, both 4x6 slots are filled with my image, and the Print button is right here. This brings us to the end of this tutorial on creating a photo postcard in CorelDRAW. If you've been watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can also find a written version of this tutorial.